Hey, welcome everybody. Um, today I am uh, going to demonstrate uh, how to replace a bad U joint. Um, basically, uh, this this is my drive the rear drive shaft on a Toyota 4Runner 84. But um, the drive shafts are essentially, I think, the uh, the same concept from uh, 84 to 88, maybe even longer span than that. Um, I just know that this is the same as my 88 um, that I used to have, so I can vouch for that that year so um basically uh i had real bad vibration on the highway and uh, i knew it was a drive line issue I, I was like there's no way i mean it was getting real bad so um basically i was i'll show you uh this is a good u-joint um basically what a u-joint is is it's a uh four four uh pronged little guy that has uh rollers on it that spins each one each way independently and um, and so this is what a proper U joint is. It actually, like a healthy U joint is, is it'll rotate and wobble and whatnot. There's no play in it whatsoever. You know, it's a pretty solid piece. So this is the one that attaches to the diff. The one that attached to my uh, transaxle, or the you know the the dry the what is it the transfer case and is getting completely bad you can see the one pivot cup is completely gone and just wobbling around in there so uh yeah that, i'm gonna have to replace that one with this one and so um basically what you do is is at first there are these uh there's little clips in here uh they're a lot easier to see on this one because i actually just removed one of them <laughs> on accident from the good one but there's little clips right here. These are dirty, but you, what you do is is that you find where it doesn't, it, they only go around like maybe three quarters of the way. You find where it's not on that side and then just pound it out with a hammer and a, a screwdriver and um, work your way around. I, I start, what it, it, it's smart to start with is it's smart to start with the, uh, to uh, what is it, getting this off the drive line so you can work with this somewhere else. You know what I mean? Like so. Okay, so now that the uh, two retaining clips are out on that side, both the cups, I guess, were bad. Um, it's the ones I'm going to be banging on right now. I just took a large uh, a large deep socket um, and a smaller deep socket, and it'll pound the, uh, the, the cap into that large deep socket. I'm really not really caring about these sockets. I can get a whole other set for real cheap from Harbor Freight, but um, this is the way I'm going to do it. Take a sledge, pound it out. What it'll do is it'll pound the cap out, and then once that cap's out enough... Uh, you can grab it with a set of pliers and just pull on it, and it should come off. And then you uh, pull the uh, the U joint out from there. So, um, sorry, I'm probably wandering. Uh, yeah, if you got all that, this is this is it. So, uh, yeah, um, that's what I'm gonna do right now. Have that sledge to go, ready to go, and pound away. Okay, so um, the uh, drive shaft has been separated from this little joint right here. Um, this was the bad part. You can see that I had no bearings in either side, and I was just running on these little uh, cylinders. And so there's the caps. So uh, I got a big socket, obviously, and you know had it placed over where the caps come out. Just pounded them down through. Uh, I used some WD-40 right there to help out. Uh, it actually did help out because um, I was pounding on it before and it wasn't really moving very much. It blasted both sides with a little WD-40 and it seemed to work. So, um, yeah, uh, I'm going to do the other side now and basically just do the same thing. Tap out one side, pull the cap off. Tap out the other side, pull the cap off. But not before I get off these C-clips right there. You can see that Right there, pound them off with your uh, screwdriver and your hammer, your regular hammer, not your sledgehammer. And uh, yeah, and then once once they're off and that's out, I can just replace the uh, do the replacement of the new one. So okay, now that it's all cleaned up, uh, lost a couple pins in one of them getting it out. Um, the way you put the new one in is you take off the two caps on two either ends, uh, very carefully place it in between, and place those new caps right back on it and um, uh, hammer one side in slightly okay so uh, you know take the two caps off to where the uh, 
things are you want to like do this vertically because so that way you don't um, these needle uh, bearings don't uh, what is it shift anywhere and, and cause anything so try and do this as straight as possible not on the side straight up and down because that's the way they are placed all around it so um, what you do uh, then because this has a zerk fitting so I got to be very careful about tapping it in just slightly tap them in on either side one side in and then once uh, it's tapped in one side's tapped in enough to where this ring that ring is exposed that groove you place the C clip in it you just want to tap it in just enough to where it's just fully exposed and then you place the C clip in it and then you do the other side okay so um, this was very tricky I uh, got scared a couple of times because it started binding up but um, I just was just like screw it I'm already into this thing whatever because it's it's tricky because uh, the needle bearings are very very sensitive and um, I probably it's probably not as loose as it should be just because of how much grease I freaking went through just trying to like mess with it so what I did was is that the way I did this one because obviously this one has this so or who knows if that's even the right side but whatever I don't care um, I figured I'd just do that one but anyway it's just gonna be where it ends up <laughs> I'm not really worried about it um, but yeah, uh, so all I gotta do is when I put this back on, line that uh, piece of paint up with the paint that's on this side, one of that two, I'm sure there's paint uh, somewhere on the bottom, there we go, that side, so it's gonna be like that, and anyway, wait, basically what I did was is that I started, I just put the T in there and then let it sit on one cup while I pounded the other end with this so that it didn't affect the uh, the little small centerpiece I just pounded it on top of here pounded it into where that cup started to actually seat itself in there and then because it's already the bearings already sitting in it and so it's or it's already sitting in it it's not moving and then I slow and then when that was in good enough I freaking um, pulled this up to where it was in the other cap and then um, essentially just uh, use this to pound that one in because that had the uh, zerk fitting in it so use that to pound that in and uh, slowly started to work it as I you know I would work it pounded a couple work it pounded a couple and I got to the point where I mean it bound up a couple of times and I was like I don't even know what to do so I just continued pounding and it actually freed it up so I mean it's I mean, not it could be used. It could use a little bit of grease, but she's she's not wobbling. She's not doing anything. But yeah, there's this side. Pound it in. Obviously, you pound it in on once. Once you get them good enough to where it's seated in between both of them, you just pound one side into where the 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 clip shows on the inside. Put the clip in just enough to where it shows the entire clip. And when you pound the other side in, with the way these work is, is you're not going to be able to get all like past like 75, maybe 80 percent of what the clip is. Because then you're starting to go on this clip into the thing. So what I, I, I noticed that it wasn't pounding in anymore. And uh, I put the clip on. When I put the clip on, I noticed that this thing stopped free range moving. So what I did was is that I started pound, I pound, went to back to this side, pounded it back a little bit until it started moving real clean. So, because obviously these things are, it's supposed to be, it's got to be centered somewhere to where it just freely rotates. And so, yeah, I got to do the other side. And then that is the replacement of a U-joint. So um, if you ever have any bad vibrations, this could be your culprit right here. So I'll get back to you when it's done. And there you have it, your brand new U-joint. See, no, no wiggle, no nothing. Not like that where I could have eventually just lost my freaking drive shaft. So um, if you feel any wobbling, and uh, you know, this is going to be the culprit. At least uh, it's a good good idea to check. So um, now I'm gonna go slap this bastard back on my freaking truck, and I've got a new U joint. I don't have to worry about that anymore. So um, I've got everything. All the lines are painted to the uh, where they get lined up. So make sure that you before you take this thing off, you line everything up. This piece, this piece, and if you're gonna get any farther in depth, this piece with this piece and that piece, so that uh, everything goes on the exact same. 
So, um, yeah, there you go. It's a brand new U-joint. See how it moves freely, independently, just like the other one. So, uh, yeah, it took probably about an hour and a half because this is my first time. You can probably get them out a little bit quicker. As time went on or as, you know, as it progressed, I got a little bit better at it. So, uh, yeah, um, there you go. Shouldn't be a problem for anybody if I can do it. So.